The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday, the 3rd of May. Actually, when I set up my webinar quite a few weeks ago, I it didn't even occur to me about the Fed speak on a Wednesday. I just that wasn't on my mind. What was on my mind was that April's candle will be completed in the monthly charts of key indexes and key stocks. And that's really what I wanted to see. And that sounded to me like we've just begun a couple of days into the new month of May. That's really what I wanted to be looking at. Well, lo and behold, I, as this week has progressed, I keep realizing just how important the Fed speak is today. <clears throat> Let me run the numbers. The Dow's are 57 to 33,742. One of the things I've discussed for, for about a week, maybe over a week now for, with subscribers, actually I've been talking about this for about three or four weeks. And it's this thing right here. Let me see if I can get to Yes. Here's the Dow chart. The gray thick line is the Dow itself on a closing price basis. The green is the nine period moving average and the black is the 14 period moving average. And I show examples, for instance, back in March, uh, is that January? Yeah, January going into February, we had that sharp V shaped turn down and a roll back to the upside. But look what happened. That green nine period moving average, even though the MACD and stochastic were all very weak, I haven't got them yet, I'm just telling you. Look, that nine never crossed negative, and look how powerful it was. Uh, I've spoken about this for ages, and I'll talk about it more uh, when I do my uh, webinar at four o'clock for subscribers today. And, you know, you can get all of this. Oh, I'm not going to say for nothing because you do have to pay for it, but you can get your money back if you're unhappy. You can do listen to my uh, eight, nine, ten or more webinars discussing most of these same things. But have a look at this. Now I'm going to try to change the, the actual chart right here. I'll just pick a stock. Let's just go to Ulta, Ulta Beauty. Look how important this, and I'll go to a monthly chart right there. Here's Ulta Beauty. And just using this one moving average from the low that was made back in uh, 2020, was it 2020? Yeah, right there. Look at that nine period moving average. Yeah, the January of 2021. Look at that nine period moving average. It's just been perfect. Look at the way it's just held so far. Look at ExxonMobil. And this, I'm going to show the importance of these techniques. And that's the reason why I've been saying, look, ExxonMobil, big red candle for the uh, month of, uh, this, is, this is the month right now, May. So far, two days, what is it, almost three days. And look at that big red candle, and yet it's doing nothing. The MACD is turning down, stochastic now at 82%. So this is a powerful, powerful tool. So I'm going to be discussing it, too, how important it is. Just two moving averages, that's all it is. And you put them on, you can use, I've got it so that, uh, that it changes color, but you can have a dashed line for the, for the shorter period moving average, the nine, and maybe a darker line. It's just easy. You, you, as soon as they cross over, you know immediately they've crossed over, something's happening. But look at the power when it made that high back on the, I think it was February something, February the 13th. The Dow makes its high. Look at that left side where the price pulled back sharply. The 9P moving average moved down, but it didn't cross negative. And look at the way it came right back. The price came back up until sharply lower, even lower than the previous trough in the beginning of February. That's when the nine period crossed over. And that's what I think, no matter what the Fed says today, this one moving average right here is telling me <clears throat> that we could see whippiness for a couple of days. But unless there is a sharp decline to about yesterday's low um, was in the 33,400, I'd say probably 33,000. 300s. In other words, another four, 500 point down day today, intraday. 
that or tomorrow, that's going to get that nine period negative. And then I can say we've got a sell signal in the Dow daily, possibly upgraded to a sell mode. At this particular point, not really. So yesterday before the opening, we took a, a position uh, on the short side in the S&P. But and, and it was a, almost a 5% gain yesterday. But that's not the issue. The issue is, let me see if I've got it right here. I don't want to change that one. Yeah, there it is. But the issue is, and I'm, let me move it over here so that I'm still looking at that. There it is. So the issue is, 9 p moving average, and the S&P didn't pull back even as sharp as the Dow yesterday. But it says that there's enough residual strength to unless there's a smash to the downside at about 2.30 to 2.310 to this afternoon that holds into the close, you can stay there. And that's the reason why I didn't want to get too carried away for the short side, even though so many aspects are, are, are negative. I wanted to go step by step. I prefer to go step by step because it, it doesn't put me in a position of telling the market what it's got to do. So we are short. And we've raised cash. We are ready for pullbacks. There are a slew of stocks that if they continue on their major move to the upside in this particular phase, I don't mind getting them either near yearly highs or monthly highs. If they're showing leadership, that leadership should remain for a while. If, in fact, we start to pull down sharply, the weakest of the week will get weaker and what do you do with a stock? And I'll talk about this this afternoon. What do you do with the Microsoft if you're not long? But here it is, just a couple, just a week ago, it's trading the two, 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 two seventies. Bam! It's up in the three hundred four area. Well, that tells me that no matter what the market does, to get Microsoft, to get Meta, Facebook. Why does it call Meta? Come on, Meta, uh, Meta platforms. Um, for, to, to toodle, toodle, toodle in the 210, 29 area uh, f uh, five sessions ago, six sessions ago, and suddenly it's up at 239. To give all of that back and to go negative, this market's going to have to tank. The Dow's going to have to probably be down 1,500 points on the S&P. Huge. Probably, uh, you know, I, I can't even say, 150, I don't know, whatever it is, a comparable move down. So now let's go back to our story. So we've got... INDU, let me just give you parameters so you know what we're looking at. There's a, and I'm going to show you how, how I put these lines in. Look, there's a Chapman Wave inside track. It got repelled at a peak D, pulls back sharply, uh, tests the 50 period moving average. I just I hardly use 50 period moving average unless it hits it and says, ah, now you can use it. Otherwise, it's just sitting there. There's the 200 period moving average. It's unimportant right now. If we get closer to 33,200, believe me, that 200 period moving becomes a magnet. But at this point, it's just sitting there. But what is important is the 9s over the 14. We've got a Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone, the support level, which it went under yesterday, intraday, and then closed right on this green line, which is the little inside track. Uh, that's the, the hint to say that you're still on the upside. When it starts to break under the close, under the pink line, that's bad. So we've got this. We've got the same thing pattern in the S&P. Look, there it is. Yep, we've got the break. There it is. Then we went into the side track book balance zone, getting closer. I'll be back. Dow's up uh, 16 points, SMP's up seven. And all, all the path it's off. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, it was awesome that Dan, if I would post Uber, and I, I don't want to post Uber because of that $103 trip, trip, uh, trip that I made on, uh, what was it? Oh, it was not Monday, it was Sunday morning, very early Sunday morning uh, from the airport back home. Um, yeah, well, look at it. I should have Monday morning, first thing, I should have just said, buying Uber. And now look at it. It's at 37. It was down the, the, the low 30s. Whoa, what a big move. That's what I mean. What's going to happen? Let's just say there's a huge negativity in the, uh, in the, the market's reception to the Fed this afternoon. And my feeling is that the Fed is going to throw a little toughness into the market because they... They're in, a, they're in a difficult position right now. They're in the position that says, um, what, the, what the heck do we, uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, what, do we, what do we do when the HGX, the Philadelphia Housing Index is, even as we speak, making a new multi-year high? Well, just about at 481, has to get to four, the high of February, the week of the third of 484.03, and today's high is, woohoo. 482.21, less than a dollar away. Um, and that gets you into the candle of January of 2022. I mean, what, what's the Fed game? What's it going to do when you've got Builder, BLDR, Builder's First Source Inc. I keep forgetting to put what they do, but they are deeply involved in the, uh, the construction companies, uh, construction, etc. All time high. As we are speaking, it gapped up. We wanted to get earnings today. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Flex, that was my point yesterday. I was saying that you've got sometimes it's important to get the stocks that you actually use of the of the companies you use all the time. That's not quite um, what was his name from Fidelity, uh, Fidelity uh, Peter Lynch. He said if you use the products, buy them because that tells you that the products are something that you are you're involved in. I'm saying, no, let them pay for whatever it is. So there's Uber. Hmm, I must have a look at Walgreens and stuff like that. All right. So, so this is Builder at an all time. What is the Fed going to do? Now, there's another aspect that I don't want to talk about right now because I need to think it through after the Fed speak today. And that is, if you look at the XLF, this is the financial sector. Where did I type that? I thought I typed it in here, but I'll type it in again. If you look at the XLF, 
That is the financial, S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. Uh, up, woohoo, 13 points, uh, 13 cents right now, 32.47. It is ho a horrible looking chart. It is attempting from the low of the 24th of March at 30.39, pops to the 33 area, and now to 32.47. It, it's got a dreaded H pattern. I'll talk about these patterns tonight. But it, it's attempting, um, yeah, it's just attempting to find a base. You remember Schwab, I said Schwab made that Chapman Wave uh, volume, uh, volume, uh, there it is. This is the, the volume climax, price volume climax at 45 round number high. And I said that should go for at least 28 days without testing that 45 high. But if it closes nicely above, what am I, what I mean by nicely? I mean a good few points above the, the 45s, sorry, 50 was that 56? Let's call it 56 high of this candle. I think it was 55 something or other. Uh, 54.90. If it can close in the 57 or even 58 area, it can go for another 28 days without getting to that uh, that level. But this is not good. It's it's making a dreaded H with another arch formation. That's the lowercase m patterns I'm going to be looking at today. We've seen this so many times before. What was the stock that we were looking at? Um, yeah, Alcoa. There it is. Why is Alcoa taking a dive like this? Alcoa has this dreaded H pattern, really a rectangle formation, takes out the left side load, tries to rally again, can't get above that arch high, and whoosh, it goes almost one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And what is it doing at 36.07? It's struggling. Look at PAVE. PAVE is this in this whole area of the uh, global U.S. infrastructure area. Why is that not running? So you, this is such a select rally right now that if you, you're in the right area, you're just saying, ho oh, hum, what's everybody getting excited about? Uh, things are nice. But if you're in the sideways trading band, you got to hold that left side low. You've got to hold the whole base of the rectangle because if you go under it, now you've got this entire conglomerate of trading uh, uh, days to break above. When you finally break above it and hold, that's really good. But now, if you if you're in it, this is tough. So I'm looking at I'm looking at. You remember Triple M? Uh, who do we have? We had uh, Sue, I think it was called. Uh, it was at 105 something, and I said, I I I'd lighten up. I'd be real careful because this is not acting well at all. Well, it did pop the next day with earnings. It went to the 106 area. Whoosh, the same day, it put, broke down, and now it's trading at 103.71. Yesterday, it went into the 102s. This is telling us this is, this is a very select market. What, what you're, you're holding uh, Merck, and you're saying, I don't know what everybody's fussing about. This is a wonderful market. Look at this, I'm getting a dividend. I'm at an all-time high. MRK trading up one, 187. So that's the thing. The bifurcation of this market is really quite something. Um, what we need to do, we need to be looking at what works and what doesn't. Look at Starbucks, SBO. Someone even put in the den, Starbucks. Someone, did I see that? Yeah, Starbucks. So it goes to the peak D. You remember in the chapter, we were always looking for Ds. That's where other things can happen. Goes to a doji candle peak D at in the 115s. Whoosh. Is down to 106 right now. It hit 105 today. So, and there's your channel wave inside track repellent zone. It didn't even get there and it's pulled back. It was looking fantastic. And then out of the blue, earnings come out of the blue. Look at ENPH. And this is what I'm really afraid of that there are stocks that if they have a disappointment getting back. To a decent level. In this case, it's trading 154. It was trading the 220s uh, just a week, a week, just over a week ago. And now look at it. it. It means it's a real struggle to get back to even the gap high. The gap high was 183, and here we are, 30 points lower than that. So for that reason, one of the stocks that we had, which I really wanted to keep as a dividend stock. But I wanted to put about the amount that the dividend would give us, and all I had to do was go to Friday. Uh, to the fifth, yeah, Friday. Uh, but I put in a stop. We just got taken out. It's running a little bit now, but I I don't want to play games in this market. I would rather, I'd rather have cash ready for the sudden drops and make the decision based on 
the strength. So talking about strength, I was asked if I would look at, uh, where did it go, uh, IMGN. And this one also showed up just the, about two days ago as a screamer. I didn't do anything. It got to a peak E, and I thought, oh, peak E, anything can happen above the 200-period moving average. That means that the 477 would be, a, and there it is at 560, would be a really good support area. But it's like a magnet because it's only the first time it's popped up above that in a long, oh, in ages. And lo and behold, today, there must have been really good news. She has nearly doubled after the company said it's treatment candidate for ovarian straight open survival. And if it face well, fat, whoa, bravo. That's what we want to hear. I love modern technology, the biotechs. That's why I'm alive today. I do not fuss at all about those guys. Um, I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Basil 34, SP's up nine, finding its time, waiting for the Fed speak. We'll see what happens then. I'll be back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. AQST, I was asked about a quest of therapeutics. It had a big spike to the upside. It's up. Uh, it's at $1.58. I never even looked at the price of this thing. It's the first time I'm seeing the price. I usually do all the analysis and everything. Couldn't care about price. It's chart formations. And that's it. I could have been 158 or 1580 It's $1.58, up 19 cents, up 13%. <clears throat> 
What a nice pattern. Held the uh, 200 period exponential moving average as support. Used it as a trigger to the upside. Got good news today. And bam. Uh, nice move. Leg E. Now, let me explain this. I'll do this. Uh, maybe I'll do this one tonight. Let me just put this down as a, 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 to show subscribers what I'm always looking at. So you see the weekly chart. This is the low at 0.58 or whatever it was. Let me just double check. Yeah, I'm just doing that by eye. Maybe, maybe it's not. Uh, 0.62. Back in the week, uh, 0.62, 0.62 62 week low. Two weeks of lows. So, uh, first of July. And then the eighth week of the 8th of July, 2022, spirals. And this is the thing about it. It has this way of spiraling to the upside. And it screams up to $1.80. dollar eighty. that's a 300% gain. All right, pulls back. Now, this is where the whole thing starts. It makes this U-shaped pattern. But that was the low. So this is peak A, that's peak B. I have to keep counting peaks because that's the way the Chapman wave works. From this, unless this low is taken out, every peak must be counted. So that's an A, becomes an A minus because it pulls back. This is an A, that becomes an A. I don't even have to put the minus because this is still the low. It could be active. This is the A, this is the B. Now you've got A, B, matches that B way up there at the 170s. Yeah, you are at about a dollar, and then it pulls back. That's an A. It doesn't really count because the next peak is a C, D, E. Why? Because we started the wave count there in July of 2022. So this is a leg E. It looks like, oh, it still has to go to C. No, it's already gone to an E. And then the monthly chart has gone to a new leg. Uh, I believe that's a leg B. Yes, a leg B. And uh, that's the way I like to look at these things. Now, most importantly is that it, it's... It, a quest of therapeutics, AQST, and you. Um, but the the real thing is that within the context of um, within the context of biotechs, especially the microbiotechs, all of these phases that the FDA has has to go through, it has to go through the approval, etc. As they come about. It's getting the product to the market. So this could be the biggest phase altogether. And then all of a sudden, once everything's approved, comes a whole new phase because now it is sales. So this is the optimistic part of it. This is the, the, the bullish area. And then the reality says there could be a period where it kind of languishes, languishes, and then we'll see what happens. But even down this fabulous action. And key support, I would have to say, is at 120, 134 to 120, which is the 200 period moving average. All right. So I said I'd go through the gold. Look, here's gold. Gold. Type it in right here. Okay, there it is. So gold right now. Let's just do the GDX first because the GDX this is what most people talk about. GDX is the market vectors gold minus ETF. Now, an easy thing to do is as the line crosses positive, together with all the other technicals, if the, if the line goes over the 40, you can get in that position. And I kept looking and looking and looking, but we were looking at other things. Didn't just say, hey, GDX is working. Get in. Let it take you out whenever it takes you out. Even with the high that was made at 36 about three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, it's pulled back very mildly. It's taken time to consolidate and has gone down to the 20, uh, to the 32s, and now it's at 34.75. So the question becomes, um, is this going to make a full cup formation back to the top on the left? Or, and that would be, I've, I'm calling this an F for now, but an F slash B alternate count in the weekly. Why? Because the 9's over the 14, the MACD is good, stochastic's at 80%, the monthly chart says, yeah, a lot of work to be done, but it's done a fabulous move to the upside, and the technicals are really starting to improve. So gold is saying to me, via the market vectors, gold miners, and that to me is absolutely imperative. You can be looking, how many times have we looked at gold, and gold does something spectacular, and then you're just looking at the, the GDX, which says, ho-hum, or wow, watch me, I've been moving up. Have you not noticed me, gold? But in this particular instance, they kind of moving together. I respect the moving together, because now you're in sync with the miners. That's the real thing. The gold is your, your root position, but I'm still saying there's a chance that you get like a head and shoulders pattern here or a failure, but I don't see gold. In this market with the XLF, 
so weak, I think that gold is a place to be. And I'll be looking at it in a different perspective with particular stocks, etc. Maybe even this afternoon, I wasn't going to do it this afternoon, I was going to do it in my, uh, my overview, my one hour overview that I usually do on the weekends. Um, Maybe this is the time to just start. In fact, I'll put it down right here, gold. Why? Because I don't think it's out of the picture at all in this phase. It's really in the picture. And that's why even when the dollar was trying to rally, and look at the dollar, just the dollar looks terribly weak. Look at the EUR, USD. This is the euro dollar currency pair. Nice bounce to go with the gold. Moving off to peak D, holding very, could this become a head and shoulders? Yeah, but you got to look at other things, and technically so far it's holding very well because the weekly chart is more important. It's the larger tide. I'll be talking about the tide this afternoon. Uh, everything from Nazare, the 100-footers, to the little uh, rook tides or the little flat flat mark, flat ocean, no waves. Uh, because if you think of this as a tide, look, the tide is really moving to the upside in the euro. You're looking at the downside in the uh, dollar. But look at the, the USD JPY which is the, um, this is the yen, US dollar Japanese yen. It went to a peak F slash B right in the time frame that we looked at. You remember looking at this cup formation, left side, right side price time match. And it did that. It was 137.91 was the high back in March. The high just the other day was 137.77. I just can't, how many times over the last year have I spoken to you about uh, chart patterns? It doesn't even matter the price that are huge. You could have something uh, like um, like uh, Alta, Alta, and all of a sudden you get these double tops. Look, look at this. It made a high at 500 and on the 4th of April at 553.06. That spike to peak D three days ago went to 556. When you're talking about a $500 stock, I would say that two, three points at a double top, <laughs> it's really nothing. It looks much more, but it's really in price, it's really not much. And it did the one-to-one, -one, it did the falling axe formation, the breakout to the upside. Um, this is the one I'm watching very closely because if Ulta Beauty, beauty products, starts to tank after being one of the leaders in the overall market, let alone New York Stock Exchange, uh, New York Stock Exchange, uh, the, the um, Dow, the uh, S&P, the, uh, the QQQ, NDX 100, out of all the different indices, this is spectacular, going from 124 to that 556 level. Um, if it starts, if people start to pull back on their buying of beauty products. Beauty products? Uh oh, I think you've got to be a little careful. So I'm watching this, we'll see what happens with the general market. Dow's down five, S&P's up five. I'll be back to talk a little bit more about the webinar coming up this afternoon. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm just looking through the list here from the den. I missed one. One was... Scott, did I do it? Let me just see. Uh, I'm just running through this. I did that, did that, did Imogen, did Uber. Uh, KRBP, is that for me? KRBP, KRBP, whoa, 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 big move up. Up 131% uh, up 468 at 825 KRBP. I can't even see what it is. Uh, KRPB. Well, it's a huge. Uh, maybe it's also in the uh, in the uh, the micro bio bio cap biotech. This has six sixty to six uh, six sixty to five. No, it has six twenty to five thirty as support. Uh, the way it pops up and then fails, it's done that every single time it's popped up. So you got to watch that support level. Uh, this is SB. Yeah, I did that. I did that. We'll hold it again. Uh, WB. Oh, WBD. WBD is. So the question is: WBD screenwriter strike. Basil, your thoughts? I am long. It's trading at twelve dollars and eighty-eight cents. It's up nineteen cents. This particular pattern with the inverted V, not just a cup, an arch formation, but a V-shaped formation. If it holds the left side low. That's usually a good sign. It's trading, WBD is trading at 12.88. Uh, it's called, I don't know why they make this so dark. Uh, Warner Brothers, Discovery Inc. Ha! Huh. Right, well, chart pattern wise, see the MACDs trying to, the histograms improving, but it's still very weak. See the stochastics at 23% and flat, it's okay. On balance volume is very weak. The nine is way below the 14 period moving average. The mag, the 200 period moving average is up at 14.37. I would be really careful, and I'll tell you why. Because if this takes out the low of the 26, about a week or so ago, about a week ago of 12.54, which is not too far away, I think this whole area here, the first real support in the weekly chart will be at 11.91. That's the week of the little long legged doji candle of the 20th, week of the 20th of January. So, all I can say is, yep, you are long, but you need to see speed. The speed on the way up in the last three, day, the three days after that low was made, and then the two big days with the gap down yesterday, it says if you cannot break and close above the high of yesterday, which is 1321. With the MACD starting, it won't improve until it gets even higher, but it has to start to improve. And that's stochastic, okay, 23%. It's not great, but having made this kind of low, I I need to see 26.7, about 26 to 27% very soon. 1321 is the, is the pink, nine-period exponential moving average. To get that pink to change to black, to go positive and turn it from pink to green, Oh, I'd say 1370 to 1390 would have to be reached. Then, for a stock like this, a dollar move up, 
11%, it does it quickly on the downside. It really struggles to do that on the upside. That's what I'd be expecting. So I would have a tight stop. I would say to you, you can always get back in. And if there's a strike, I don't know how it should impact them negatively. So unless you think the strike's going to be uh, done and one and done very quickly, um, I think the chart says it could drag on. So just be a little careful. I'd have a fairly tight. So I'd say, you know what? I'd get, rather get in if there were two peaks, like a peak A, not the one that we saw, but underneath it, a peak A, and then another one, leg B. In that leg B, I'd probably say, I'd look at it again. Um, so that's that next question came in. Yeah. So I, I will look at. Yeah. So the question came in. Oh, am I going to remember AQST? Is that what we're looking at? AQST? Oh, I can't even remember. A. QST. Yes. So I I'll see if I'm gonna, if I can do if I have time tonight. But basically, I have found that if I am not faithful to this particular, it's one of the few modifications I've made to the Chapman methodology. Um, I mean, significant ones. There've been little minor ones to my CD book introducing the Chapman methodology. All I can say is that I have found that if I count from this low bar each successively high peak, it gets me to a place of um, resistance and a possible turn sharply lower quicker than if I'm just waiting. Look, I'd have to wait all this time for for the leg C. Uh, yeah, I'd have to wait for a move above 1.78. 1.79 starts leg C, if, this is, if that's the way I'm counting it. No, I, mean, I, I like this methodology. It's being good. I don't want to take the time to do a left side, right side price time match now. I do want to talk about what I'm going to be discussing this afternoon and why I think it is so important, especially if you've started to raise some cash. In the context of what has worked, if you look at the XLK, this is the kind of the average, this is your portfolio of S&P Select uh, Spider Fund stocks. Um, you've got individual stocks I'm sure that something like a DDD is in that. I'm not sure, but it's something like a D, which is down at the bottom. I'm sure that um, uh, ZM, Zoom, is in it. Look, down at the lows. Low. Oh, I can't believe it. I haven't looked at this for a few days. This is multi-year lows. Um, so that just gives you the spectrum of things that are absolute docu-sign, things that are absolutely not working, and it averages out because you've got your handful. And really, at this point, it's a handful of stocks to, the, to moving to the upside. As I said, like a matter. But within, and look, and Amazon is kind of stalling. Amazon is not doing that great. And made a peak F underneath the the, uh, the previous high that I thought it should try for in this in this price time match, but it's stalled in the chaff wave inside track repellent zone, and it's trading at 105 at this particular point. You see the rectangle on the weekly. It should have taken that out if it was going to be a, a real winner in this particular phase. And I just think it's kind of stalling. And that's just telling me, if you're looking at, um, I couldn't even find bank stocks that I could say, these are the real winners and these are the real losers because most of them, I mean, Berkshire Hathaway, I, I will, it's a financial, but can you really call it a bank stock, a financial bank? Stock? No, yeah, they could be a bank by themselves, that's for sure. But they are in everything. This is a, that's what I always say. My my hats off to always to Warren Buffett, no matter what he says and he does things. I remember Dave White used to often talk about things, that, especially silver. Once when he was talking it up and he had actually sold. Yeah, these guys do that. But this is a guy that has the businesses. Yes, he has a lot of. He has Occidental. He has a bunch of of money in companies. But he also runs a chunk of the businesses that he has, which is means that he's an active live. He's basically um, an econ economic strategist because he's putting his money where his mouth is. So you can see this is a really nice action with Berkshire Hathaway, a monthly chart, about a 50% retracement from the 360s high to the 260 low, and now look where it is at 326. I mean, compare that to JP Morgan, which was doing great up until about six months ago. Now look at it, it's stalling. It's just sort of made a peak either other day. Right, this is the importance of the 200 period moving average. So what am I going to talk about this afternoon? I'm going to be talking about what positions we would like to take on sharp pullbacks, 
positions that we have, what's the relationship to what's going on in terms of what the Fed decides this afternoon? How does that impact us? Is gold going to have a big spike to the upside because of what they say, or is it going to pull back? There are a lot of things and a lot of areas that we can go into. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community, of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. The 10-minute uh, E-mini had a, a low run about the 41, 37-ish area, and that was at about 9 o'clock, then screamed up to the 4154 area. And it came straight down. This is what I call the Eiffel Tower A pattern failure. I'm not going to be able to do everything this afternoon. I want to have some very specific things. What I'm going to be doing is show you how you can use some of these techniques, how how important it is to be monitoring something like a nine period over the 14 in these particular patterns. I'm going to be saying these are the stocks. Uh, this is what we have. This is what I'm looking at. Uh, what has worked, what hasn't. Uh, thank you very much for the congratulations on shorting the S&P pre-open yesterday with that big 5% uh, uh, pullback um, uh, in the market, at least in, in the position rally. No, the day is young. We've got this. It's almost like a, both an insurance policy and a policy that uh, says we want to be ready if there is a sudden takeoff to the downside. But going up, I would not be surprised if we chop, 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 making an, um, Bert Simpson's uh, hairstyle, uh, this, this spiky spike pattern, 
And next week, we start to pull back, and the nine period crosses under the 14. Pizza, don't be surprised for anything. I don't see, I just went through it. Okay, and CFLT, I just mentioned that the earnings, uh, it better be good because it doesn't look very, very good, positive. Um, so, this is going to be for me a very important time wise because timing is very important to me and a very important pattern recognition as well as what stocks and sectors have not held well. Why is the SLX, the steel, acting so poorly? Or is this now going to turn out to be an arch pattern that forms a cup formation and starts a rally? These are things we want to look at, what to get in for the next couple of months, and uh, what, what, kind of, what kind of tactics are we going to use in this environment? So far, they've worked well, but you never know if it's going to stay that way. So I hope to see you all this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Check the front page of TFN. There's a lot that I'm going to be discussing that's active. It's not just words. I want to put it into practice, um, as I always do. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and I'll probably be back with Tommy later on.